How many of us realise that Britain has the most unfair tax system for working families? Doesn't surprise me at all, no. Uh, really? Yeah, no, I'm shocked. Or that a one-income family of four can pay up to five times as much tax as a single person to have the same standard of living. Doesn't surprise me at all. I'm not surprised, really. It's, it's quite a struggle bringing up children. And that a family of four would pay 15 times more tax here than a family in Germany. Really? 15? I mean, they're very family orientated. Over here, they seem to penalise you for having children. I have to write down everything we earn, what I've got to pay out that week. Or, as I, I try and work it week by week so we actually have a bit of money. Um, so I sort of budget everything. But then when you have to replace your children's shoes or and next to they have an unexpected growth spurt and it's not exactly cheap, especially school uniforms. Um, well, his last wage slipped, he earned uh, 372 and some odds is, and he actually bought home £312 AP. But that varies, he can go from down to 300 or he might go up to 316 every week. It depends if he has a weekend as they class unsociable hours, they get slightly more. So it's never the same? No, no. I can't say he gets... £300 a week because one week he could get something completely different. Housing I go up every month um, even though they say they contact HMRC it tends to be a very big gap and if you do earn slightly more than what they say that little bit can soon mount up and you end up owing thousands and I know I'm not the only one who's been caught out with that. Then you've got, um, well, the kids at school. Uh, she didn't qualify for child um, nursery fees because she was born after the cutoff. So we've got to wait to September. And basically you're just watching, you're going paycheck to paycheck to cover your rent, your food shopping, your TV licence, your council tax, your electric and gas, which seems to be going up and up and up, and water bills. It strikes me that it's yeah. really stressful. Yeah, because we pay our water bill six monthly. Um, so I have to make sure, I know roughly what it'll be. We don't, tend, we tend to be around the 200 every six months. So as long as I know I've got that. Um, then you've got the car insurance, which I'm quite lucky because we're older or I've got a lot of no claims and years so mine isn't as bad as someone who's starting out um, but even so we can only afford to run one car and Matt's garage could move so we could end up having to go to two cars which we can't afford we pay rent of 110 59 but we do get some housing benefit with it because without it, it'd be £157 a week and we couldn't afford that. Do you pay the same, do they give you the same amount of housing benefit or does it change? It varies on what he earns. Um, I don't know by how much because they just take it, but I think I'm at higher, I worked out I'm paying slightly more anyway. But then they want, the housing association we're with, want us to be ahead enough that when Universal Credit comes in and you've got to wait, which at the time was six weeks before your money kicked in, they wanted you to have six weeks worth of rent in your account. You've, you've got to keep track of every penny you spend even like a little luxury you think oh we'll have a takeaway then you're sort of thinking can i afford it can we afford to take the kids out we've got half term coming up well it's the end of the month the end of the month and the beginning of the month is our worst two weeks um because of what we've got to pay and the beginning of the month is council tax 
which is £154. So out of Matt's wages, I have to find the rent. So that's what, 100 and, you're looking at 164 not counting any answers. Um, no, 264 at the £300 wage. Which is a lot. Yeah, and then that leaves my 150 to cover any other bills, food, and anything else we've got to yeah. put out for. You can't just say, oh, we'll go off out for the day. You've got to think, can I afford to put fuel in the car? Parking, then you've got to feed three of them. If they want a little treat like an ice cream, again, that's something extra on top. And ice creams aren't exactly cheap anymore. And then um, we went out, I'll give you an example. We went out to a show. We had free tickets because a friend goes to it so they gave us a family ticket we still spent over 30 pound and that was just having something to eat out i looked at that and it would be childcare. i done it over a six week summer holiday uh, i based it on eight pound an hour because i didn't know what the minimum wage was and I based the childcare on my daughter's preschool fees, but done it over three children. For me to work six weeks, I would earn before tax 1,800. My childcare bill would be 3,800. So I'm 2,000 short to, to go back to work. So it, it works out better for me to stay home then to end up in even more debt, paying for something I can't afford. So the government's got it wrong, really, haven't they? Yes. At Tax and the Family, we agree. This couple have one income and three children to support. They live in social housing and are struggling to make ends meet. They would need over £400 per week to be above the so-called poverty line, yet survive on roughly 370 they're paying about £1,300 in income tax each year. For every extra pound they earn, they keep only four pence. This is a staggering marginal rate of tax of 96%. No wonder this family, like so many others, feel they are being penalised by the tax system. If we want to get families out of poverty, it makes no sense to start by reducing their income.